The micro cap and Russell just been absolutely crushing it. Although, let's face it, it's hard to get more information on these names. It's out there. Uh, and, and you could argue they're always overvalued, certainly by traditional Wall Street metrics. But here we are again. Microcap's up 3.5% today after being up 10% last week. The Russell up another 1.8%. So what are your thoughts in general on these names that Wall Street doesn't talk about, at least the media, but there's a lot of money being made? Yeah, there is. I mean, it's just a lot of liquidity and a very small group of stocks. So you've seen a lot of these stocks go through the roof. But I think the key here is liquidity. That's all we talked about. You know, Shal just mentioned liquidity. You mentioned liquidity. Mind-numbing liquidity at $1.9 trillion uh, that essentially is going to be bestowed on the economy on top of the fact that we already have some rocket fuel here. So what I wonder is, Charles, on some of these smaller names that we don't necessarily follow, that don't necessarily follow the whole reopening of the economy, what happens when that liquidity gets taken away? And we know what that looks like. You remember back when the Internet bubble burst. You know, there's a lot of internet companies. Remember, just remember, it was all about eyeballs, right? If you had eyeballs on your on your screen, that was that meant your stock was going to do really, really well. But when that liquidity finally ended, it ended very, very badly. So right. I think small caps in general, if you're talking about the reopening trade, have a lot of room to move here. But I think those micro caps, I worry because I think when that party stops and that music stops, a lot of investors can be very, very surprised at how far these stocks can actually go down. Uh, let's talk about red flags. Uh, Ryan already brought one up with respect to when the liquidity goes away, what happens. A lot of folks on Wall Street also voicing a lot of concern about the level of leverage that investors have. This margin debt has absolutely rocketed higher. So, you know, listen, obviously, as this going higher, so is the market. So, Ryan, how concerned should we be? We've heard before, hey, margin debt is too high. Yeah, I mean, if you look at it, it's been about 50% since last March, Charles. So we've had a lot of leverage put onto the market. And typically, the S&P does underperform. Like the next year, maybe a negative 2%. Two years out, like negative 7%. But I think the key here is it's being concentrated in a very, very small area of stocks. You know, we've talked about large cap tech. We've talked about these micro caps. You can talk about SPACs, the other hot spot that money's going to. And, but I think at the, at the end of the day, if you start looking at other places where, you know, money has really just not been flowing to as much, like that reopening trade, you know, I think that's where the value right. is. The way I look at it is the pain view here, this pain, is I want to be the one banker in a town of 1,000 borrowers. I don't want to be the town where there's like 1,000 bankers and one borrower. And I think that's what a lot of these markets look like right now. So I think, you know, All yeah, right. I would be very careful about that. Go, go west, young man. Go west, young man. <laughs>